House is set to pass a Republican-backed budget today. That's the plan from Budget Committee Chairman Paul Ryan, who calls for deep spending cuts and an overhaul of Medicare. Joining us now is Laura Tyson, who was the chief economist in the Clinton White House. More recently, she served on President Obama's Economic Recovery Advisory Board. She's currently in the President's Council on Jobs and a professor at Berkeley. And that's where she joins us from this morning out in California. Welcome back to In Business, uh, Dr. Tyson. If you were you. if you were uh, looking at these uh, two proposals right now and, and specifically at the president's, this question of closing tax loopholes keeps coming up for you. Mm -hmm. What would you be advising? Does that translate to a tax hike for consumers or for corporations changing their rate? Well, I think that the proposal uh, is to close loopholes, which will create enough revenue to actually both uh, provide some deficit reduction and also lower some rates. So at the end of the day, the idea here is to generate enough savings to do both. That's true in the personal income tax area. In the corporate area, what the president has said repeatedly is he's looking for a way to close the corporate tax loopholes and and re reduce the corporate tax rate. So that reform would be revenue neutral within the corporate sector. Within the personal sector, it would be both revenue enhancing, but it also would reduce rates. Uh, the criticism, though, is that there's not enough, frankly, rich Americans, people who fall within uh, the changing tax bracket, to create that revenue. So I think if you look at the numbers, I mean, uh, it depends what you define uh, rich to be, and it depends upon how you decide to uh, do the closing of loopholes. For example, there has been an interesting proposal by Martin Feldstein uh, and working with others on the, on a, in a bipartisan group, and they've suggested basically capping some of the uh, tax loopholes, and the cap could vary with income levels. So mm -hmm. this is all going to be in the detail of how you actually do this, who actually would end up paying on a net basis more and who would end up paying on a net basis less. But the goal is that everyone would face lower marginal tax rates. But you would need to, to broaden that base. Absolutely. You cannot afford. I mean, this is basically about two things at once. It's about generating some revenue for deficit reduction, but it's also about making our tax system much more efficient and simpler. It's a very inefficient system. It encourages, you know, for more than a decade, we've had a situation where the Congress has wanted to uh, subsidize or encourage certain kinds of behavior. They have been unwilling to put it on the government spending side, so they've put it in the tax code. The tax code is has become so complex. We looked at this at the, at, in the President's Economic Recovery Advisory Board. There's so many overlapping mm -hmm. educational credits, for example, or savings credits, or low-income credits. It is so hard to get the tax forms filled out correctly. So there's a desire to get this right, to improve it, that's really independent of deficit reduction, but it's important to do them together. Does, does getting it right, though, mean getting rid of some of those credits, or even, like, the mortgage interest deduction and some of those other programs. Certainly, it can uh, mean getting rid of some, or it can mean capping some. And I think that actually this is part of the, the big negotiation that will have to go on. People understand exactly where the big amounts of money are. Mortgage interest is one. State and local government is one. The tax uh, benefits associated with high uh, price insurance plans are another. Those are all areas where there's a lot of revenue. There's also a lot of distortion in the system. Mm -hmm. um, do you eliminate it? It? Do you cap it? Do you cap it by income level? Those are the kinds of things that will be under discussion. But you know, the bipartisan fiscal commission that reported in December and had Republicans and Democrats support, uh, just not enough votes to move forward, but it did have bipartisan support, made a very strong argument in favor of this approach. So as the bipartisan uh, policy council, another group, uh, and there are plans out there. I think there's been a recognition a long time that even if we weren't doing deficit reduction, we really do need to reform the tax code. And by the way, 
and make it simpler uh, for individuals so that when they uh, face uh, mm -hmm. a tax payment day, it, many of them will choose not to itemize at all. Uh, and for those who do, it will be much easier to do. Um, and we were talking about the mandate to essentially just create more revenue, try to solve a deficit problem in this country. And one thing that Ironically, in some ways, the Democrats and Republicans seem to be uh, agreeing on is the concept, at least, of making it uh, a lower tax rate for corporations or broadening that base, changing what corporations pay. What's a significant reduction in the corporate tax rate that you would be supportive of? Well, you know, we do have the highest corporate tax rate in the world, and um, when you add on state and local, it's uh, about 40 percent. If you look at the average for other countries uh, w that have companies that compete with U.S. companies, you're really talking about rates down in the 25 to 27 percent range. So we are putting our uh, large multinational companies that do a lot of job creation in the United States, they're very important for exports and research, mm -hmm. we're putting them at a big competitive disadvantage. Uh, I think that people people are looking for, they're, they're taking that average, the average of the OECD countries, they're taking our rate and they're saying there's a substantial gap that uh, in terms of uh, rates that can be closed. It is certain, the reason for doing this, I really want to emphasize, is that the U.S. companies are basically being put at a competitive disadvantage. The rest right. of the world has been moving their corporate tax rates down aggressively. There's no agreement around the world on stopping that process. Everybody's competing for these jobs and investments. And we want to make uh, things that it should be looked at in the U.S. as something to make the U.S. a more competitive location, not just for U.S. companies, but for foreign companies working here. Right. So how do you, you take it from 39 percent down to what? Or you create a, a holiday to I, have I repatriated that, capital? Or what, what I, do you do? I think that there, those are two different things. There, there, is, uh, there is the issue of the stock of money outside of the United States that may be as large as $1.3 trillion. Uh, companies uh, can, I think, would be interested in bringing that money back at some some, uh, reduced uh, tax rate. We've mm -hmm. seen that happen once before. That's a separate issue from uh, rates on income earned going forward. And I, I wouldn't really want to put a rate on it. I right. would say the closer, the more we can get a reduction in the rate towards the OECD average, 25, 27 percent. Um, but we need to broaden the base in order to find the revenue to do that. All right. We will see whether this progresses. Thank you so much, Dr. Tyson, for joining us.